These are the stories. There is a foundation out there that helps you get back into it. Of organizations making a difference. What really limits our ability to do something is people's imagination. And empowering others across Canada. When I get into that sledge, I'm free, man. I'm playing hockey. It's a great organization and it's worth supporting. In our community. Nestled in the beautiful Cowichan Valley on the Providence Farm Grounds is the Cowichan Therapeutic Riding Association, or CETRA. Here, participants come together to share in the experience of therapeutic horse riding and equine-based wellness programs designed for persons with special needs. One such participant is 11-year-old Atticus Scally, who at the age of two was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Atticus was quick to share why he loves horse riding so much. When I get to just get on the horse and just hang out with it a little bit, I get to go around the ring and, I mean, I get to do some really cool stuff. Like, sometimes the horse will, will take out this big ball and it's like um, horse soccer. He just, he goes at it and swings his head around and it goes to the other side of the ring and it's really fun just being on his back while he does that. And then I haven't gotten quite into canter yet. It's a little too much, but um, I do like trotting around the ring. Atticus, it's time to get ready to go riding. Can you come and get changed? At their home in the Cowichan Valley, Atticus and his mother, Kate, prepared to leave for their regular visit to Providence Farms. The way Atticus runs upstairs, it's hard to imagine that at one time he was unable to walk at all. But Kate says it's been a long road to get where he is today. Atticus's diagnosis was spastic diplegic cerebral palsy. Until he was three, he couldn't walk. His, uh, he had such severe spasticity in his legs um, that he couldn't get his heels on the ground. And we had to have a surgery so that he could walk at all. In Halifax, our neighbors had a child with a disability who had ridden um, in competitively um, for many years and she encouraged us to find a horse therapy program and so when we moved back to Vancouver Atticus had several years there where he was doing hippotherapy and it was super helpful for him. So hippotherapy is physiotherapy on a horse so a physiotherapist leads the therapy but instead of using a bed or the tools in a gym the horse is the the equipment that the patient is working with. Adapt, overcome, right? That's it. You know what happens when the hand comes Atticus says the therapy has had a huge impact on his life. Improved my lo life a lot with, uh, I've been able to stand up straighter, I've been able to get a more brisk walk. It gives me a lot more confidence with being around uh, animals like um, horses and anything of that variety. When Atticus first started riding, uh, horses were very big, so he was very small, and uh, there was a lot of confidence building for him in figuring out that these big animals were, were at his service, so to speak. He never got to use a proper saddle. He was always on a pad because the horse movement was so integral to his own movement that he needed to be as close as possible to the horse's body. And then when he got older and he's moved to Sutra, his confidence is such now that he is an independent rider and he gets to use a proper saddle and he's got his feet in stirrups and he's he's handling the horse and just him and his coach where he used to have two sidewalkers and a leader to in order to be able to ride mom i'm ready let me get my shoes on mom do you know where my riding helmet is yeah it's in the trunk of the car Thanks. Welcome. Now it's time for Atticus and his mom to head to Citra for today's riding session. The tide's really low, Atticus. Look at all the land out there. Oh, wow. That is a big open area. It's not a far drive and the location couldn't be more idyllic, with large open fields surrounded by great green pines, and the environment itself feels therapeutic. 
Standing out on the grounds, Jesse Fraser, the executive director of CITRA, shared with us how the association came to exist in the Cowichan Valley. So the, the facility itself is located on Providence Farm, and uh, which was owned by the Sisters of St. Anne back since, I think, 1865. And since the 60s, it's been created as a therapeutic community for just any individuals that face any kind of challenges whatsoever. So it's a safe, inclusive environment for individuals to participate in. Many of the structures here on the farm are very old or heritage buildings. And we're at the base of Mount Suhalem. And it's a very wild um, area. It's tons of forest and it's absolutely a beautiful, peaceful location. Very therapeutic as far as the entire environment here. The property has outdoor riding trails, an indoor arena, and of course the stables, where there are horses of all shapes and sizes. Hey, Loki. This is the barn where our horses are housed, and behind me is one of our therapy horses, Loki. We have 15 horses on site at this time in our programs, and all of them are, most of them are older, I should say. Most of them are kind of geriatric, and we need horses that have been there and done it all because they are fright flight animals. Um, we need horses that are just, have been exposed to so much and aren't phased by anything, sounds or movement or color. So uh, we feel that they're worth their weight in gold. Other people may not find them very valuable because of their age and some of them might be arthritic or have some health issues. Because of their age, some of Citra's horses require extra care, like the regular washing of hooves to keep disease at bay. For us, they are perfect creatures for what we do. And this is Loki here. He is a Norwegian Fjord. This is a very popular breed for therapeutic riding. They are very, very strong. Um, and uh, they are kind of built like a draft horse, like a, a horse that pulls carriages and whatnot, except that they're much smaller, so they're closer to the ground. So Loki has his tack on, and the tack is the equipment. So that would be the saddle and the bridle and whatnot. That's because he's just been prepared for his next lesson, his riding lesson. So he will be in their arena very soon. Norwegian fjords are known for their very calm and quiet temperament. They truly are the heart of this program. See you later, Loki. I'm just gonna close the door for safety reasons. We just want the doors closed when no one is in attendance. Hi, Frosty. Hi, Grady. So Grady is our largest horse on site. In fact, he is the largest horse on Vancouver Island. In fact, he may be the largest horse in the province. He has 19 hands. And what that means is the traditional or old fashioned way of measuring a horse is when you place your hands one on top of the other, starting from the ground, from the horse's foot, then that gives you an idea of just how big this horse is. So we call him our gentle giant. He is probably one of the friendliest and kindest horses I have ever met. He's very popular here. See you later, Grady. I'm just gonna close your door. I'm gonna take you into our rider room, past Grady and Loki stall. It's a nice, spacious, bright room, and this is where we keep all of our riding helmets and two dozen sets of boots. From here, I'm gonna take you up the ramp, which leads directly into the indoor arena. There may be horses on the other side, so I'm just gonna open the door really slowly. And now we're just gonna go directly into the mounting area. Our mounting area is specific to uh, therapeutic riding facilities. Um, all our horses have to be specially trained because we do very unusual mounts and dismounts. Everything is accessible so that we can take wheelchairs up here. Uh, there's different levels of blocks as well so that for the tiny little kids uh, that need to be higher up to be able to mount the horses, then we provide whatever level of mounting block that they need. And for children and adults who um, have, are not able to weight bear at all, we do have an electric hoist 
and it's very it's a transfer unit similar to what uh, people in wheelchairs would use to get in and out of a tub or in and out of a bed and all our horses or several of our horses are trained specially trained to handle having a person floating over their backs and and gently being put down on the horse's back with the use of of an electric hoist without an electric hoist there are many people that would not be able to ride because it would be just too difficult transferring them uh, by hand onto a living animal like that. Climbing the mounting blocks has become a regular routine for 12-year-old Brandon Edwards, who was another longtime participant of CITRA. His friend Francis says the team at CITRA has been instrumental in helping with his physical disabilities. Well, medically, it's brought Brandon a lot stronger with some of the um, parts of his body that don't operate as well as they could uh, for his age and they really straightened his back and helped his arms and legs become stronger and uh, he loves it. He loves all the people down here. They've been fantastic for him. Good job now. <laughs> One of the things that Brendan likes to do is to do a little walk outside. Excellent walking up the hill. Yeah, we're going all Well, the motivation behind the program is just to help uh, anyone with facing challenges, that those with physical disabilities, there are so many physical benefits. The horse's pelvis moves in a very similar manner to that of the human pelvis. So a horse is essential in this part of uh, an individual's therapy. Uh, I've met kids also that I know of one who was diagnosed with spina bifida, who was told she would never walk. And long story short, uh, not only can she walk, but she can run now. So I've seen just literally miracles happen. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. As Atticus Scally arrives at the Cowichan Therapeutic Riding Association, it's clear that he can hardly wait to get out of the car. His mother Kate says this is a regular procedure. So Atticus rides twice a week and he makes to change in the car because then he's ready to go when he hits the ground. He doesn't want to have to get there and then go change his clothes into riding clothes because he wants to go and hang out with the horses, probably spends 30 to 40 minutes socializing before we even get to his lesson. With all the horses in the stable properly greeted, Atticus makes his way upstairs to meet with his coach, Lisa Pink. How are you doing? Good, good, good. You made it here, no problem. My name is Lisa Pink, and I'm the head instructor at the Couch and Therapeutic Riding Association. And behind me is where we do a lot of our work in the indoor arena. And there's activity happening right now and a lesson going on. So you'll hear the horses walking around, sneeze. You'll hear some people and the birds are active as well. My role as an instructor here is to make sure to pick the right type of horse for uh, the program out of every 10 horses I look at, usually only one will work because they need to be very special. My other job is to uh, mentor new and upcoming instructors, keep them educated. Okay, so Brendan's going to bring his right leg over the front of the horse and he's going to bow. Give them riding lessons so that they can understand the different equipment and learn how it feels and and trying to always encourage them to practice what they're preaching. Um, the reward that I get from being at the therapy program is seeing all the happy faces, working with the horses, and you don't give up. Nobody gives up. You keep going, you keep going, and then when that progression happens, it's fabulous. I think that's the reward. Stepping up, getting the horse nice and close to the mountain block. For Atticus, the relationship he has with his coach is very important. My old instructor from the mainland that I used to have was all about the task at hand. There's no time for anything else you need to train. But with Lisa, I get to uh, 
hang out with her a little bit more. That relationship between his coach Lisa and Atticus has been really interesting to watch, uh, watching her get to know him and to understand what he needs. She's a friend to him. Good for you, Atticus. He will talk to her and she'll listen and hear about, he'll tell her things that he wouldn't talk to anyone else about because they spend this intimate time together, just the three of them, Lisa and Atticus and the horse. Make sure your hands are in front, that you have control. Your reins don't get too long. He depends on her, and she's learned, she used to give him a bye when he would come in, oh, I've had a bad day, blah, blah, blah. She'd be like, okay, well, maybe today we'll just groom the horse. She's figured out that she needs to push him, and that's awesome. Like, she encourages him and gives him challenges, and he always rises to it. Ready to rip, snort, and go? Do you want to see what the obstacle course is? It's pretty similar. Okay. It, it, he's, I just go have a look at it. He's going to look out the window. A little bit different. Yep, the uh, maze is a little different. I simplified it a bit so that um, uh, Brendan can do it too after you. Obstacle courses at Citra are customized to the rider using a variety of platforms, cones, and props. We're going to go get his pony. Opening Frosty's door all the way. There you go. I'm going to grab your reins and make sure that you go around him and and go to his shoulder. Oh, here he comes. He's going to turn around. Hi, Frosty. Okay, collecting up the reins and bringing Frosty this way. And you want to always lead your lead him on the left side. Frosty needs to say hello to you. Okay, so opening up the stall guard, putting it on the ground, looking where you're going. There you go. Make sure you stay beside Frosty. As Atticus, Lisa, and Frosty the horse make their way to the riding arena, members of the Citra team prepare more horses for participants still to come today. And according to Jesse Fraser, the executive director of Citra, there's many on their way. We currently have approximately 100 riders every week, and they range in age from four years old to 70, although over 90% are under the age of 18. So how does the facility support so many riders? Lisa Pink says that Citra relies heavily on help from the community. We have over 100 volunteers that come every week. And with some of our riders, the continuity of the team of people that are working with them is really important because change can be difficult. Brendan's friend, Francis, says this continuity has been a big help in Brendan's development. Well, Lisa's the instructor for Brendan and has always been. She knows him very well. She's very astute on understanding what kind of therapies that are needed for each individual. Let's stand up for a moment. So our first lap around is just walk, yep. warm up, get into the groove, yep. find your groove. Yep. OK, all the way around. Walk on, Ember. Good job. Okay, so now you're heading in a straight line and then turning across the diagonal of the arena. Yeah. There's obstacles a little in your way. So I really trust her judgment on what she sets out for him to accomplish. Brendan and Francis even sing Citra's praises when recalling a particularly scary event. When I was riding the barn a long time ago, I was riding Ember, and my brother and I were riding horses. We were riding, and suddenly there was a helicopter flying so low to the roof, and tin roof, obviously. It flew so low, it spooked my horse, spooked his horse. The Citra staff were excellent. Uh, the second they realized that horse was going to bolt, the instructors were on top of the kids, not the horse. They were there to protect the children. And uh, they set it up when he, they could come back and get on the horse in a private quiet time to make sure that their confidence was rebuilt back up to being a good rider. So he loves telling the story to everybody. <laughs> Our community will return after the break.
We now return to our community. With his horse Frosty properly tacked and his coach Lisa at his side, Atticus Scally is ready to begin today's therapeutic exercise, an obstacle course through the Citra Arena. Stepping up, getting the horse nice and close to the mounting block. Standing square with your feet. Good man. Well done, Atticus. Jumping up all on his own, getting the tough leg over the back of the saddle. Feet in the stirrups, the reins. Ready? Yep. Walk on. So we're going to walk all the way around the ring, on the right ring. So this gives time for Frosty to have a look at everything, all the obstacles that are in here, anything new. So one more trot down the long side of the arena. Are you ready? Yep. Use your leg a little too. Oh, very good. That's nice. He understood your body. After a couple of warm-up laps around the arena, the obstacle course becomes more challenging. Tasks include weaving between pylons, moving plastic rings from one post to another using a foam sword. Good for you, Atticus. That's a lovely stretch. And even an exercise called the Pony Express, in which Atticus delivers prop letters to an old-fashioned mailbox. Okay, here we go. So, delivering the mail through the poles, don't fall off the edge, the Billy Goat Gruffs will get you. So opening the mail, delivering it, closing the lid, putting the flag up, saying that Atticus and Frosty have delivered the mail. You ready now? Yeah. So and at long last, it's time for a little bit of horse soccer. course. I've just finished my ride today and I feel great but I'm really tired. <laughs> it was very difficult to uh, with some parts of riding but um, it got easier and easier as we went along and uh, practice makes perfect right? It may have been a long road to get to where he is today, but with the help of Citra, Atticus is just one of many on a life-changing journey. And as Mother Kate says, it's a path well worth riding. Watching Atticus learn and, and take things on what, beyond what he's being asked to do. He's, he's going over and above now just because he wants to, and that's a great feeling for me to see. We are completely committed to Sutra. We will be there as long as Atticus is willing to be. I think that horses will be a constant in his life for the rest of his life. Probably until I've outgrown every horse in the barn, yeah. Producer-director Mike Wavrican, writers Adrian Sala, John Roney, interviewer Adrian Sala, Director of Photography, Chris Wilson. Production Coordinator, Camera Operator, Stephanie Rossino. Location Audio, Mark Planeton. Editor, John Roney. Sound Mix, Gilles Maillet. Integrated Described Video Specialist, Simone Cupid. Narrator, Jim Van Horn. Graphics, Andrew Antonello. Regional Content Specialist, Sylvie Fiquet. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director Production, Karen I. Director Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Programming and Production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2019, Accessible Media, Inc.